So here we are, finally, eh? The AD9850 from China has finally arrived, the replacement. Uh, this is the dead one, but um, kindly they sent another one and this one does work. So this is that unit now built up that I was talking about quite some while ago now. And many thanks again iQuest for allowing this build to be created. I found uh, a good idea really for testing the output was to put a speaker on the end. And uh, that way I can now turn the knob here and you can hear the output on the speaker. It's uh, quite a good hearing test thing actually. I seem to run out about 14 kilohertz and the noise seems to go louder though, about 4. It starts to drift off some here. You can still hear it fine. Of course I'm 48 years old so I've got an excuse. Still hear it fine. I'd like to know from about here if you folks, if you can leave a comment and say whether you can still hear it. This is a good uh, audio check. So there we are. 20 kilohertz and I wonder if anyone can still hear that. And we'll just quickly bring it back down again. So there we are, an online hearing test if nothing else from this video. Alright, as you can see we're running at about 5 volts and this frequency generator is drawing 200 milliamps. So we'll have a look at this and we'll also have a look at the scope for the waveforms. Because one aspect of course is, does the amplitude actually increase at about 4 kilohertz? So what I'll be doing is I'll be turning this knob here and you'll see the changes on the screen but hopefully you'll be able to see down here in the bottom life we've got the frequency and we've got the voltage peak to peak so on this 500 Hertz scale we'll start at 500 and does this actually does the voltage peak to peak actually rise so here we are at 4 kilohertz and the answer really is no and we go to 6 and it's roughly the same and we can carry on let me just change the scale here a bit. And what's going on is, very slowly, we're losing the peak-to-peak -peak voltage. You can't really be seen here as such. But if I now change here to, say, 100 kilohertz. So now we're looking at 166 kilohertz, 266 kilohertz. And we go back to the scope, change the wave again. You can see it's quite a clean wave and we carry on around now and you can see that it's now actually decreasing in amplitude and you can see here that the voltage peak to peak is dropping. So if I carry on right now all the way up to 13.6 keep on going now okay there's about 13.6 megahertz and you can see that is the amplitude that we've got, which is around about 4.8 volts peak to peak. So it's still a 5 volt output and very useful for um, putting into a buffer and maybe changing up to 20 volts. But people do mention quite a lot about these units, these AD9850s, only being good for 10 megahertz. And I'm seeing some artifacts here. If we bring that in a bit further, you can see those artifacts. So if I zoom this down now to 10 again, now yeah, there's 10 megahertz. This is now cleaning up and carry on even further down and the waveform actually gets cleaner and the voltage peak to peak will increase. The whole waveform is sharper. So that appears to be what people are talking about. If I zoom right the way up I think it's a 30 megahertz I can get to on this. I'll just show that I'm doing the 100 kilohertz. 20 in fact I go for the next one. What's that? 1 megahertz. So 21, 22, yeah, it runs out at 29.999999 megahertz. And now the signal, wow, that's actually a little bit messy, isn't it? So that's probably what people are talking about with the 10 megahertz being cleaner. Anyway, I hope that was a bit of an insight there. And uh, the main thing is, the thing has arrived, the circuit's now been made, and it does work. Okay, thanks for watching.